The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Zurich Australia Limited, ABN 92000 010 195 AFSL 232 510 and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Hi, I'm Andrew Rocks from Ensemble, and I'm thrilled to be bringing to you uh, the podcast Engine Room that's devoted entirely to the practices or the business of the business of financial advice. Over the course of the next many months, we're going to be interviewing Australia's best independent boutique advice firms, their practice managers, their GMs, on what environment is conducive to being a best practice how they keep talent, how they attract talent, and what the future of financial advice is. It's the Engine Room Podcast. Welcome aboard. Zurich is proud to be supporting this episode. The Zurich and OnePath Advisor portal is more efficient than ever before, giving you access to two leading brands with three highly sought-after products, underpinned by two powerful underwriting engines, all with one simple sign-on, making it easier for you to do business and perform at your best. Hello, welcome to another edition of The Engine Room. Now, I'm going to start with a quote, which I don't normally do, Um, but this particular business has a, a fair bit of sort of uh, just a good vibe. And, and, and you know, uh, it's an award-winning business, but let's start with one. No two zebras have the same stripes. No two humans have the same fingerprint. No two individuals have the same needs. And this is the byline of Zebra Tailored Wealth, which is headed up by the powerful Alicia Laird, who's with me today. Good morning, Alicia. Morning. <laughs> Now, the good news is, is this is not your first radio with uh, Ensemble. Can you remember what the last time that you came on? I can. I can. It was the end of 2020, December 2020, and I was chatting to Clayton. And it would have been remote back in the back then. It was definitely remote. Yep. COVID times. And um, uh, Kieran, the sound guy, and I, we did a bit of stalking. We went and re-listened mm-hmm. to your podcast. So throughout this this interview, we're actually going to be able to go back like a Polaroid picture <laughs> and, and figure out you know, what you thought was going to happen and where you are now. But the reason that we spoke only recently is that I think some of what you wanted has happened, but I think way more. I think you probably progressed in the three years a lot further. But um, with, without me stealing your thunder, I'd love to hear about, um, you know, a bit about your backstory of how you've come into uh, running Zebra Tailored Wealth. You know, you were with an institution for many years and just get a feel for, you know, if anyone has helped you along the way. So so maybe you regale us of, of way back when, please. All righty. Yeah. So I was with ANZ for 16 years or so. and uh, It was a preschool sort of uh, internship. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, uh, I had one year at Commonwealth as a power planner and then straight into ANZ at uh, the age of 21 or 22 or something like that. Did you know what financial planning was at 21, 22? I actually didn't. So funnily enough, I I got this Commonwealth graduate program and I went away to Canada for seven months and I got back the day before my graduate program started. And I was in the waiting room with a beautiful girl, Monica Minahan, who's still one of my best mates now. And I leant over and I said, do you know what a paraplanner is? (laughs) And she's like, nope, do you? (laughs) So, well, the good yeah, news the is the good news is it's not a financial planner in Parramatta, of which there are quite a lot. But um, no, I didn't know. I mean, I the the whole concept of para, I think, was something that um, was quite remote because um, you know there's paralegals and mm-hmm. para brokers and para planners. But back then, it was like I wonder what that is. But mm-hmm. so you started in at age 21. Yep. What kind of financial planning were you? And when we, so which bank were you working with? So that was CBA down in Canberra, with Canberra? the grad program. Okay. okay. And um, what were we to Sydney, where we are now? Uh, yeah, what, one year at CBA grad program and at the end of that, CBA was like, oh, you guys all want jobs. And they couldn't quite work out where to put us. Uh, so we all, having had this amazing year of training, uh, we, we were all kind of out on our own to work out what to do. So I grabbed a three-month contract at ANZ 
and I left 16 years later. Sounds like Gilligan's Island. You went on a three-hour tour. You're washed up in a, a desert island with a hand's end, and, and you graduate, and you left there 16 years later. And what was the impetus um, for leaving? Because from, from memory, if I do the maths, that was before ANZ shut the doors. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, the impetus was I so had a daughter in 2015 and I was going to take four months off work uh, and my husband was just going to be mum, dad uh, for a couple of years or something. So it was going to work really well. And she was one month old when he got offered a really good gig in New York. And so we went, oh, so my four months maternity leave ended up turning into three years living in New York, having another child. Yeah, so I got back at the beginning of 2019 to ANZ and the world was very different and I was building up my, essentially building up a business anyway from scratch. So I thought, oh gee, I should probably do that for myself. Yeah, and I, I, I imagine, you know, that the lens that you look at being all of a sudden with two more responsibilities that didn't exist, you know, five years earlier, you, you kind of think, well, what can I do in order to make sure I'm there for everyone? And, and running your own business has that allure. Yeah. Although sometimes it is a double-edged sword, which I imagine we'll, we'll, we'll touch on today. Yeah. I mean, it always seemed like a good idea to start a business, but um, ANZ was amazing to us all. It was such a, such a great place to work. And so we just never had any, any reason to leave. But beginning of 2019, I had a pretty good reason. So. Oh, very good. And whilst you were at, you, you just gave ANZ a rap and, um, you know, it is relatively rare. We get people in here rapping banks. So, yeah. but, but bank is only an institution. Were there any people in that period of time that when, when you were sort of honing your skills that really helped you, you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah, we had so many amazing people. Uh, one of them still my, one of my best mates now, Neil Duncan. Um, he'll like the shout out. Yeah, I mean, and so many of my colleagues that now have their own businesses, which are amazing businesses, and we all still catch up, and we're having our own little PD day this Friday, and just a great group to share with, and and they really did teach us the value of advice. You know, we were we were, uh, it wasn't all, obviously, we all had to move to fee for service away from commissions and things like that, but they actually taught us how to be proper advisors. It was pretty amazing. I'm a bit um, I'm a bit sad about the future of. Um, Kind of the newer generation having to learn, but not having that that platform to learn with, I guess. Well, I think they definitely have the desire, and you know, one of the things that we might talk at the end when I ask you your, your thoughts and opinions of the, the industry is that, yeah, there's there's not that big institution who has the ability and the pockets mm. to train the professional planners for tomorrow. It's been left to small to medium business owners that yeah. have you know, increased compression of time and, and, and resources, be capital or otherwise. So um, I'm not sure how that works. I mean, we I always give a shout out to the Ensemble platform for being, you know, a second set of hands for small business owners when they are bringing people through. Yeah. But, um, you know, more, more, more help's needed, um, I, I believe. So then you kicked off uh, Zebra. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where'd the name come from? Uh, well, yeah, it, it all started with a T-shirt that my daughter had, which was kind of somebody painting a rainbow zebra that said express yourself. And I was like, oh, gosh, I really love that. Um, and, yeah, just I, I'm, I, I love art. I nearly became a professional artist rather than a financial planner. Oh, so. more information. Tell us more information. <laughs> so so um, was that when you first graduated um, university? Or? Yeah, yeah, I nearly went and did fine art instead of finance. Uni. So, but then I decided I I do enjoy having money, and I thought, no, you know what? I'll do art as a hobby, and I'll do finance as my career, which is good. Well, it's good. It's, I suppose it gives you that balance, and if you've I got the time. Both. So, yeah. so back to zebra. You had that. You had the colourful zebra. I had the colourful zebra, um, and then yeah, I was just brainstorming how do I get a zebra into it, and then we thought about the no two. Zebras have the same finger, have the same stripes, and no two humans do have the same fingerprint. It just kind of worked and then I designed the logo where you've got kind of looks like a fingerprint but it's actually two zebras. It does indeed. That's right. And I did when, when I listened to your podcast in December 2020, um, one of the things that you stated which was quite profound is that you like to have, you know, each client gets individually tailored portfolios, which you said um, uh, with great pride, but you also then said, 
but I'll need to figure out how I'm going to make that scalable mm -hmm. so that I don't end up with a highly paid job, that I end up with a business. And we were talking off air and, um, you know, you mentioned that the sort of where to in the future and you still want to be able to personally maintain that that ability to work with clients. And, and you, you made reference that you've, you've, you've also not just worked with, with clients, but you've helped a lot of individuals, a lot of, a lot of women in particular over the last couple of years. I think you quoted in the hundreds of, of people that you've, you've assisted at quite a vulnerable time for them. Um, but you're looking to potentially build your engine room, but you stay as the advisor yep. and bring someone in who potentially really enjoys doing that. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. We've got. I know we're going to talk about the team and stuff like that. So, yeah, we've now got three advisors. So, I guess the question for the future is, yeah, if if the three of us want to continue to be advisors, then, uh, yeah, what do we do to allow that to happen for us to keep helping more and more clients? And the the answer is probably getting a COO or somebody over the top who can kind of sort out the rest of our business and help us keep getting better. So, just the fact that. The self-awareness of saying that, but the fact that you set a CEO over the top rather than underneath you is, is means that I believe you've probably got a chance. You know, I sometimes see, um, you know, really powerful founders who are great with revenue and, and clients, and then they hire um, a general manager or a COO, and then they spend all day telling him exactly what to do. <laughs> and, you know, it's like- That will not be us. Yeah, yeah. So, so no, well played, well played. And um, tell me uh, your, look- I reached out to you because I was um, I was I was on my LinkedIn as being my want, um, and noticed that you won practice of the bloody year this year. Congratulations! Tell me more about that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we're with RI Advice, who we love. Um, so shout out to Joseph A. Root and Peter Ornsby, and things are changing a little bit for us next year. But yeah, we've I've been with them the whole time, and I just I feel like I've had so much support. There's no way Zebra would have succeeded the way it has without their support. And they obviously like us too because, yeah, we got the practice of the year, which is pretty cool. And did you know? Uh, I, knew, I knew a couple of couple of hours beforehand. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, make sure that you're not having Just, at the toilet yeah. break could, could for the be, time. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's <laughs> the DMC's nightmare. Uh, I guess we'll go back on the yeah. next one. But, um, but yeah, that was amazing because we had – that was at a conference in Auckland and I had uh, April and Zoe who were the, the – well, if – the next two zebras, like the first two zebras that came on board and they're still with us now. So. Oh, fantastic. And we'll talk about that as well. And I remember in your um, the podcast from, from a few years ago, um, you the rationale for picking um, uh, IWF, which is RI advice, was that, that it had a lot of that ANZ sort of lineage. And, and although you were moving into self, into your own business, you still had a lot of those resources and whatnot. And, yeah. and you know, where we are today, we're talking about your two new uh, partners that have come into your business, um, Scott and, and Ross, and they've come in from ANZ, but, <laughs> but they took a while to get here. Is that right? They did. They so, did. so tell us that story. Yeah. So when I when I did decide to start the business, there were only two planners in Sydney that I, that I trusted and kind of approached and thought, yeah, I think I could work with these people. And one was Scott and one was Ross. Uh, but at the time, for various reasons, they, um, yeah, just weren't quite ready. Um, so, yeah, a couple of years later when ANZ Financial Planning closed down um, and then also six months after that because Ross was in private bank but and that, that hasn't shut down. Uh, but, yeah, both, both kind of decided at different times that they would quite like to have their own businesses or not be with the big, big bank anymore and thankfully they – kind of came to me and said, hey, can we still do that thing? So I was like, yeah. So tell me though, before that, you were, you were running your own business. You had um, some support that were helping you. You were building up your client base. You were managing your client base. Did you really want to grow a business or was it just when they trusted you with their future that you thought there's something more in this? Maybe I've got a little bit of that in, that in me. Yeah, I think the latter. Yes. Yeah, I was pretty happy. Like I'm very happy with Zoe and April and we were all having a lovely time. But uh, but the writing was on the wall about single advisor businesses as well. Just hard to... Um, Why is it hard? Uh, well, just probably um, higher expenses, um, harder to scale, obviously, because it's kind of just you sitting there. Um, I was, I'm very lucky that my, my partner is also an RI advice owner 
um, Stu Bates. So he's up in Queensland, but that was amazing for like camaraderie and just being able to kind of bounce ideas off each other and things like that, which I hadn't really had, but still the, the final decision was down to me, right? And then the actual implementing was, was just still kind of just little old me sitting there, whereas now to be able to share with the boys, it's, it's pretty great. We yeah. get a lot more done. Yeah, and also I think what, you know, you opened with um, the costs have got more and that's that's just uh, the the mechanics of how licensing works and yep. and and technology and whatnot. So maybe we can we can sort of change gears and, and talk a little bit about sort of how you're running your business because um, the Scott Riddell and Ross Falconer came on how long ago? Uh, a bit over a year. Okay, so the honeymoon's over, gentlemen. If you're listening, <laughs> so we're now going to talk about sort of the your mutual philosophy on how you're operating your business you're clearly very happy with ri and and ri's got a new incarnation is that somewhere where you'll be headed for sure yeah asc yep. okay great and i think that that's sort of happening in the next six months from yep from just from a, a viewer from afar awesome so let's talk about sort of the the the, the business um do you like when um uh so you obviously had your own clients uh, I imagine Scott and Ross came with some some of their own trusted clients over the years as well. Yep. Okay. So, do you run your business as a collaborative? Do you have your own P and Ls? Is it to pod or not to pod? Maybe give us a bit of a feel of how how it yeah. operates today, and then later on we can talk about you know your wish list. Yep. Uh, yeah, I guess we do have the pods because when Ross and Scott came on, <clears throat> we already had. So we got April, who was the original Zebra. She's with VBP, and she's amazing. So it's been nearly four years now, and um, she's like family, like she literally has come out and stayed at my house and my kids still talk about her now. And, um, yeah, you've ruined VBP. You took her to New Zealand. I took her. So it's been well noted. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> that was difficult <laughs> getting visas for New Zealand, but yeah, it worked uh, about 24 hours prior. Um, so yeah, so April and then, um, I've also got Zoe who's amazing. So she's a Sydney girl. Um, and I was kind of at the point, I think it was about six months after that first podcast. So it was kind of mid 2021 and I thought April and I are amazing, but I really need a person sitting, sitting with me, right? Yep. I can pass them a file or say, Hey, could you do the brainstorming here? And so I think it was May, 2021. And I spoke to my mate, Alastair Barr, who's founded Striver. Uh, Shout out Alistair. He's not the first time he's been here. Here in Sango, you know what to do. We chuck the link in. Um, so, yeah, I was literally, I was like, oh, I, I'm not sure what to do. I, maybe I'll, I'm thinking of maybe getting a part time person, or maybe I'll get a mum who's come back from maternity leave or something like that. And he said, oh, I've actually, I've got, I've got the person for you already. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, uh, do you want to meet her at eight o'clock tomorrow morning at your office at Macquarie Park? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and by that afternoon, I, I, Pretty, I said to Zoe, yeah, like I'm, I'm sold. To, uh, and she uh, took about a week to think about it and then came back and said, yep, I'd love to come. So apparently I didn't offer the most money, but there was something about Zebra that she loved. So that's been amazing. That's now been two and a half years. So, so one of my questions is, you know, maybe explain how you um, later on, how you do your recruitment process. But um, uh, a lot of it, uh, you, you rock up there and say, yep, I want you today. And then she comes back to you in a week. So uh, it's it's it's. I get a feeling that you've got uh, a lot of what you do, and and is deep relationships. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that the the, the the two advisors that are involved with you at the moment are people the two that you trusted. You probably work with them for a decade. Yep. You lean in on relationships a lot. So that's a double edged sword, which which um you know we might ask some <laughs> questions about. But yeah. But uh, shout out to Zoe Zhang, who's um yeah. who's who's still punching along there. So yep. So you've now got. Three um, three advisors, and are they running their own P and Ls under your overarching Zebra structure? Yeah, so we've we've all got our own kind of client bases and P and Ls. Um, yeah, we we love the fact we don't um, necessarily have to w deal with each other's clients day to day or anything like that. But we love the fact you know we've all, we've both Ross and I have been to Europe this year for a month each, and it's just lovely to go away and know that. Uh, Zebra could actually give your client advice if you needed to, because otherwise, the minute you step on that plane, you can't give advice when you're overseas. So. It's like having a locum if you're a GP in a town, you know. So sometimes yeah. it's been really hard for them to to go away. Yeah. And look, that's an interesting byproduct, and wasn't something that was mentioned when we talked about the struggles of being a single advisor. Is mm. is that ability to have someone to cover you? Yep. Yep. And succession, all that kind of stuff. Just the what ifs and. Um, 
So we've we've done our buy sell agreements and all that kind of stuff now because if something did happen to any of the three of us, we would just love to know that our clients are actually looked after and now they will be. Right. So you're practicing what you're preaching to clients with buy sell agreements <laughs> and funding. <laughs> okay, awesome. So um how do you apportion the engine room, the the, the currently the, the people in your team who are doing advice production or research, how do you manage that between the, the three um, ahead of Dragon, so to speak? Yeah, so at the moment, um, so April and Zoe are still, um, just because everything was working so well, um, April and Zoe are still kind of helping me. Uh, but we do have another lovely girl at v- Virtual Business Partners, Mew, and she helps Ross and Scott with some of their back office. So you're sort of building again, sort of copying yeah, what we did. copying what we did there. Okay. And we're finally, we're all coming together. We've kind of, there's so much in April's head and Zoe's head and my head and it's all just worked for four years, right? But it's not down on paper. And so, well, now it is. We're, we're getting there. We're well, you can put it down on video as well, right? Got, so, you, video, you, know, you, yeah. can, you can do those sort of things. So, um, all got, the zebras kind of, yeah, have uh, been in the same room for the last couple of weeks, kind of one day a week for the last few weeks and where hopefully by the end of the year all the processes will be all documented and um, even though, so we've got, Ross is a private wealth advisor, so very high net worth individuals, Scott's kind of 50s plus, kind of lots of retirees and a lot of my new clients are actually more 30s and 40s, so we've actually got very different businesses but we have worked out that really we're the same kind of breed of advisor and we we can actually make it so that Zebra does things one way, but we can tailor tailor it to the client. Yeah, look, and, and um, you know, the, the one commonality with those three types of client base is that, that every client's been in every other sector and will be, you know, your 30 to 40s will end up being in the 50s to 60s at some stage. Yep. Specifically with your own client base, because this is the one that you, you took and you kicked off. Well, what's what's the methodology or what's the your preferred type of client? Uh, I tend to find that I'm mainly dealing with people like like myself and my friends, I guess I kind of say like usually usually it's people in their late 30s or 40s or sometimes early 50s and just dealing with all the complexities of life and kind of always had always had it pretty good and usually a couple of good incomes and never really had to budget. But now we've got maybe high debt repayments and sixty thousand dollars worth of school fees and um, you know, we're getting a little bit older, maybe haven't thought about the super and sorted that out, maybe haven't thought about the estate planning and sorted that out. So we just kind of come in and f- help fix their entire financial lives. That's really all we do, just the holistic, holistic yeah, everything. <laughs> absolutely. And I love, I used to love those clients. And and fundamentally, when people ask me what I did, I, I would always sort of say, I make people do things they know they should do <laughs> in a time frame they otherwise wouldn't. Yeah, you know, so true. it's true, isn't it? You know, and, and but but it, but sometimes it can be, uh, you know, I used to feel sometimes maybe the same that I felt sometimes I was more motivated to get this person to succeed than they were sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I suppose now that's very much, you know, your filter for what kind of clients that, that you guys want. Now, um, where, whereabouts are you? I mean, you mentioned Macquarie Park. There's probably a Macquarie Park in every state of Australia. So, so where, where are you located? Uh, yeah, so we've got an office in Macquarie Park, which is kind of four minutes from Lane Cove, which is where I live, so North Shore. In Sydney. Sydney. Good. Sydney. I got there Sydney. eventually. Uh, but yeah, we're also, Ross is um, in O'Connell Street in Sydney, in the city. So two kind of, two real offices and then obviously good old Zoom. So my dog prefers me to be on Zoom, so... Oh, and what's your dog's name? Oyster. Is your dog Shout a out black and white dog? No. Oh, I so that might have been the <laughs> inspiration. So. No, but she does have a zebra costume. Okay, so we're, that's going to be one of the promo picks, right? So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I, do like, I do like the leaning in on that. <laughs> now, um, how do you measure? So with, with, with your engine room, so you've got, you're very happy with, with your engine room and you're looking to then replicate that across your two um, partners who, who, are, um, who are coming in. How do you measure sort of the operational success? Do you have sort of workflows or what's what's the, the mechanics of it for you? Um, we probably don't do that enough at the moment. So with all the new um, processes that we're implementing, we are going to be doing like th- X-Plan threads and tasks and all that fun stuff. So shout out to Gil Gordon there. I was listening to the podcast that you did recently with him. And yeah, we've kind of got everything appropriately timed so that every task comes up at the right time. And so then we should be able to measure if, uh, if for any reason we got 30 tasks outstanding, well, something's not working and we need to go back and fix it. So 
we're hoping that helps with, yeah, all the timing of things and processes. So X-Plan's helping you deliver um, on, uh, well, you're actually delivering X-Plan's a platform for delivering advice. Yep. Um, it's pretty dry though. Yep. <laughs> and you're... You're not. I mean, you're not getting visuals here, podcast listeners, but we've got a very bright, vivacious lady here. Um, what do you use when you're all presenting to your clients? We use Wealth Central now, which is um, is owned by Insignia, so they've been developing it, um, and it is amazing. So it's the real goals-based visual projections, cash flow. Give this an example. We hear that all the time. But give give like one or two examples of the thing yeah. that the go to in the software that you go to and just know that there's going to be a bit of magic in the room. Yeah. Well it's so I mean it's so good even from the fact find phase. So before if anyone is coming to meet with me, they've already popped all their information in this in the software for me. Uh, but it literally only takes them 10 or 15 minutes and it's kind of fun. Like they've made it a bit like a game. So they're dragging themselves in and their kids in and their house in and all that kind of stuff. Um, so they've already, and it turns into our wealth portal. So they've essentially, before they've even properly met me, they've already m- met the wealth portal and entered all their data for us. Uh, and so then in that meeting, once we've clarified all the data, we can literally switch to something called projections and they, they can see, you know, that their money is going to run out by the age of 67 or that their money is never going to run out or um, there's even a little postcard from the future so they can actually literally see themselves and their house and all this kind of stuff. So it's just, yeah, for those visual people who may have otherwise been a bit bored, um, you know, you can, you're sharing your screen or you're turning your monitor around or whatever and they can actually kind of visualize their lives, which I think just keeps them um, keeps them more on track for the meeting as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to come back to your, your inference of visual people. And um, I had experience using that actual piece of software. And um, the bit that I liked was that when you did send the link, um, people would fill it out because it is mm-hmm. – and, and I know that developers spend a lot of time on that gamification. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something as simple as once they've finished entering that piece of data, the very next thing that you suggest them – has to be awesome. You know, it's a bit like, (laughs) um, and so, and by having, by bringing in and humanizing it, I think from memory, it even um, like linked into Google Maps and stuff like that. So they- they Yeah, it's a picture of their house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, or even their aspirational house, you could put in something like that. (laughs) But we were talking about um, uh, people who are visual um, and, you know, the way in which the industry has ended up is it's, it's, Basically, being built by legislators that that are, are completely left brain, that um, that are very wordy, um, that uh, that haven't really paid any real heed to to people who are creative or or, or, or right brain and enjoyed visuals. But when we go back to basics, visual earnings the highest percentage, auditory is the next highest, and, and kinesthetics ties it all together. Yeah. So, do you find that you get a lot of cut through, especially with your clients that come to you maybe in moments of vulnerability? by having these tools? Yeah. Yeah, I think some of it's got to do with the clients. I think a lot of it's got to do with us too. I, I look back, I don't even know how I was a proper planner without this kind of software. You know, in, in the past, you go away and do a financial plan for someone, they come back to you and they're looking at all the projections and they're like, oh, and could, you know, what if this happened? And you literally have to say, oh, I'll be back in a week, you know, because you, you had to go away and do it all again and um, pop it all on a piece of paper or whatever and um, – yeah, I I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that to the letter of the law, you were a perfect planner. But the impact and the, I suppose, responsiveness, yeah, to the client to be able to show them what, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and and look, that's what's needed, and it's 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 interesting that it's um, uh, it's and and shout out to yet again your your licensee who's incorporated um that, and I imagine that's dragging across to the new co as well. It is, yep, yep. And then you add things like DocuSign and everything into the mix, and you just go, wow. Just amazing time savings. Okay. Someone just went wow to a piece of technology. <laughs> okay. So I normally ask about your tech stack. Now, um, other things, uh, you mentioned Zoom. Um, I've been coming across a lot of people recently and they've um, really lent into the Microsoft sort of platform. Is that um, part of what you're in? Yeah, we are. We are Microsoft 365. We um, uh, we use security in depth slash tech in depth. So Michael Connery, we um, for all our cybersecurity and IT stuff, we shout out to him. Yeah, well, great. Chuck, what's what's the name of his business again? Security in depth. Yeah, done, done. Sound guys nodded. That's that's a lock. So he does all the cyber audits for our advice and stuff. Um, they got a great great company there. 
So, yeah, Microsoft 365, yes. The only reason yeah, we use that for everything except for some reason we're on Zoom instead of Teams, I just find it's slightly quicker and I don't like wasting time. Yeah, look, um, I was on Skype before Zoom. I was on Slack before Teams. These things change. Yeah. And um, what's 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 really good is the, the fact that the contracts now are very much SaaS contracts means that you pay per month. Be in the old days, you used to have these big sunk costs of technology. Mm-hmm. Potentially, you still deal with the explain with with building threads and whatnot. Yep. But I imagine in your community um, of like minded businesses in your licensee that there'd be a bit of an ability to to leverage off each other. Would that be right? Or, yeah, or is- for sure. Not not even just our community, really. It's the, that's that's the whole ensemble thing, isn't it? Just all the sharing. It's amazing. Look at that. Hey, see that? Drinking game <laughs> has begun. We're one nil. So um, no, we'll, 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 it's the, the positive evolution of financial advice is the positive evolution of financial advice practices, and perceivably, the general public and the clients only really see the bit that they see. And they don't they don't see that much value in have you been on hold for thirty minutes to Centrelink or whatnot. So, the more efficient and the less friction that we can deliver to the frontline mm. representatives of our wonderful um, industry, yep. um, the better. So, um, yeah. And then I um, I also asked a question um, as far as people that potentially hold you to account, like maybe uh, a coach or a mentor. Is there anyone who you touch base with from time to time and say, "Am I mad?" <laughs> um, yeah, I am good friends with Sharon McCafferty from Slipstream Coaching. So um, I've kind of, they've helped me out a couple of times and would probably love to use them or someone like them in the future. Um, yeah, the boys have probably just spent the last 12 months kind of betting down their businesses. And um, yeah, I'd say probably the next, probably in what, in six months, once all the processes are all sorted and all that kind of stuff, we'll probably look at. A big where to next. Yeah, um, things are going really well, but yeah, we uh, if it ain't broke, fix it. Was something we heard the other day in the conference in New Zealand, which we thought was pretty good. Yeah, no worries, no worries. And then let's talk more about the the, the sort of the human side of the people. And thanks for sort of out laying out sort of how you like to run um, mechanics of your business. You also uh, got the self awareness that that as it grows, you'll need to put other people in. I asked off air what would be the great thing that came out of this podcast and you mentioned that i mean you've you've, by the way you've just referred to your business partners as the boys three times but you mentioned that potentially a little bit of different color as far as maybe bringing in a female advisor or two is that something that is on your wish list or you're really passionate about yeah i mean we we help a lot of women we have a a lot of women coming to us uh who do prefer women and, and why, why is that? Have you got a, a referral source or what's the... Uh, we, we help a lot of girls. Um, so Verve Super has a super squad. They've recently won a CanStar award for it. So it's pretty cool. So they've got kind of a business coach and a divorce coach and, and myself who help any of their girls that need help. So slow down. So, so and- they've got... That's a, The Verve Super is a, is, a, is a product. It's a place where you invest money, but they've got additional services that... Are promoted on their website or what? Yeah, they're just they're amazing. So there's three co-founders there, and they they started this um, super fund, and then all the women were joining and saying, "This is amazing. You're my financial community." But they they are a super fund. So they're not the financial community. Yeah. So so they built a financial community for these women. Okay. Um, they've since also done yeah, Verve Money, which is not super obviously just investments. Um, so yeah, we we've just got to know a lot of. A lot of those women over time, it's not exclusive to women. Men can definitely join too, but it is predominantly women. So we do, yeah, we do just happen to help a lot of women. Um, Zoe has done her, prof- or just finishing her professional year, which is pretty cool. Shout out, Zoe. That's uh, yeah. um, that, that's uh, w- welcome, welcome to whiteboards. <laughs> so, um, uh, yes, yeah, she doesn't quite want to be a planner yet, um, but we'll get there whenever she's ready. Uh, so yeah, in the meantime, if we were going to get another another advisor, probably get a female, I imagine. And um, tell us about then the cadence of of are, are, you know are you working from home? You're at Macquarie Park. I mean, you've you've come in very graciously today to to the city to talk to me. But 
do you work from home some days? Do you advise this is a hybrid? If I was coming to work for you in the future, um, which would be a fail for you, but if I was, <laughs> um, you know, what would be the proposition, the non-negotiables as far as where I'd work and uh, yeah, I think we'd very much say hybrid because we um, most most of us, yeah, we we might go into the office one day a week, maybe uh, otherwise predominantly from home or just when a client needs us in there. So very flexible. Where I have complete faith in my employees, I do not care when they're working and not working. I know they get their work done, and I know they work more than they probably need to anyway. So yeah, it would just have to be someone who's who's kind of happy with that flexibility and has such a good work ethic that we would never have to worry anyway kind of thing. Yeah, they're all, they're all perfect, right? No, so. Nobody's ever left, <laughs> nobody's left Zebra yet. So. Oh, there you go, there so you go. We so. want to keep that going. No, that's a, that, that's a great testament. Um, as far as the meeting rhythm, so I'm going to ask you the question and I'm going to, I'm going to par- par- ask for the answer in two, two parts. So what are the meeting rhythms of what I'd describe as your vertical, which is your personal engine room? And, you know, what's the cadences weekly, daily of, of how you meet your team? Yep. And then potentially the horizontal, you know, when do you get together with your two other sort of advisors yep. to share information? Okay. Uh, yeah. So within our pods, um, it's more, we use Zoom message. So we're always kind of chatting. April and I only have one scheduled meeting a week. Uh, but, you know, we would be chatting a few times a day on on message. Um Zoe and I would uh, have a few Zoom video meetings a week to talk about um, various clients that we're both working on together and all that kind of stuff. Uh, The directors, we have a six-weekly kind of directors meeting where we kind of block the entire day out and get through. Is that typically a face-to-face meeting? Yeah. Yeah, we are either either in the city or Macquarie Park. Okay. And and, and every six weeks. So then is that a – have you subscribed to a a sort of a business – cadence philosophy or is it just the the time frame that you know that that's long enough to be able to have achieved the things we agreed with last time yeah exactly it just seems to be it just seems to be a good length of time that you are forced to get done all the action items that you've kind of addressed or or talked about in the previous meeting uh but it doesn't come around so quickly that that you want to cancel it because you're worried that you don't have enough to talk about or something we just find that six weeks works really well and let's talk about some of the tools that, that you use because you mentioned that, that between yourself, you've almost got a cradle to grave sort of client base. Um, do you run your own collective SMA or MDA and, and, and is there any platforms that really have, have helped you and your business, especially in its infancy? Yeah, we don't, we don't run our own. We do have, we have in the last 12 months developed our investment philosophy uh, document and it is the same for the three of us across the board, but it's very tailored still. You know, it's not just, oh, everybody uses this. You know, we've got the very tailored approach for the high net worth and then we've got various SMAs. We've got a lot of clients that love the ESG approach, so we've got probably a a lot more, many more options there than many other advisors would feel that they need. Um, so yes, we have the same investment philosophy, but it's quite a long document and it, and it's very tailored for each client. Well, let's talk about the ESG for instance, because we've, we've, we've historically, we've had, um, you know, podcast series on ESG. Um, who do you work with there? Because I, you know, I value your, your, your judgment there and who do you think's doing it well? Are we allowed to do proper product shout outs here, are we? Of course, we can do whatever we want. We, 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 yep, yep, even Kieran goes. Kieran's just nodding. There you go. Uh, we, we do use the Russell uh, Sustainable SMAs quite a lot. That They're probably our main go to. Um, we use BetaShares a fair bit as well. Got a meeting with them this afternoon. Uh, that's probably enough product shout out, I think. Or moreover, I mean, remembering that, that uh, you know, the desire of running the engine room is to reward the people in our ecosystem who are doing a good job. Yeah. So uh, it's not necessarily an advertorial. It's very much um, if no one ever mentions you and you're a supplier, then, then potentially mm. you might want to go and ask your people for a few 360 feedback loops. So um, yeah, shout out to Russell and, and Beta Shares. So well done. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I'm assuming that, that you know, I ask other questions now about the engine room to do with, uh, you know, incentives and whatnot around that. But as 
as you've brought partners on and they've brought their own revenue streams, I imagine it's very much a partner structure. Yep. But how do you reward you, the people who are working for you, your employees, and, and how do you celebrate? What sort of fun do you have? Yeah, uh, well, I have a feeling from now on we'll all be going to all the conferences because we all had such a lovely time uh, this year. So that's kind of one way of all having a bit of a holiday together, which worked really well because because we're not in each other's faces all the time. Um, it was quite lovely to go away and spend a whole block of time together and we took a few extra days. I was just about to say, like what I'm getting the vibe, and I've done that as well with my other businesses, is whilst you're over there, you're, you've done the – you, you chuck on a day or two at the end or the beginning. Yeah. And you can just get a little bit of that. Such valuable time. And you're in a good location. Yeah, we had such a lovely time. We we, we all came home and couldn't uh, – all our muscles were, were a little bit sore. We'd done – I think we'd done 35,000 steps in two days or something stupid because we'd climbed a few mountains and all that kind of stuff. But okay, yeah, actually, great memories. climbed a mountain. This wasn't just, wasn't just on a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, where, where, where about New Zealand was it? Uh, it was in Auckland. Okay. So we did Mount Eden and went out to the islands, all that kind of stuff. It's really good. Very jealous. Very, very jealous. <laughs> yeah. um, in relation to uh, the uh, – so going going on, on conferences is one, but, you know, how do you measure the output of your, your team members? Um, is it – because you would have you, – you, you, all of you would have new clients coming in. You probably have a target for new clients. Um, you've got your existing clients that you have to keep – um, happy and, and re-sign their fee um, engagement every year. Yeah. Um, what does a what does a good week or month look like for yourself as far as productivity? Yeah, to, to be honest, we we don't have specific targets. I mean, we um, I'm I'm fairly certain we see more clients in our week than the average bear because um, we I'm just happy being really really busy, uh, and I know that the girls are probably busier than the average assistant as well. So we, I'm not fussed in having any targets there or anything like that. Um, at the end of the year, we, we love to look back and kind of count, see how many clients we've helped, how many new clients we've helped and stuff like that. We Do don't you know the number from last year. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not massive. Like um, kind of, I think we were 30 clients or something. So more than one a fortnight, which for us is quite a lot given how much time we spend on each client. And what's the number of retained families or executives that you, you have each? Uh, we're only – we're probably only at 200 between the three of us. Yep. Um, so, you know, when I first started the business, I my number was 80. I didn't want to necessarily go above 80. Um, so, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm, we're, I'm there. So, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, but with technology and – all that kind of stuff, I, I think that number obviously can definitely be um, exceeded. I mean, I know I do know a lot of advisors that do look after 150 or 200 clients. I don't know. I don't quite know how they I think do that. the 200s, the t- I, I speak to lots of people and I think the 200 might be a little bit ambitious at this stage, but there yeah. are some that have got that 150 as an aspiration. Well, they've built an engine room around them and they've got – They've got a lot of help, you know. So, that's right. Um, yeah. So and I don't think that's they've an got a very inspiration for me. You know, but- you know, in the wealth accumulation space, the one thing about that is they're very rewarding clients, but their life does change. That's right. You know, like uh, yeah. it's it's um, they can meet yeah. someone, they can unmeet someone, they can have children, they can they yep. can empty nest. It's actually it's actually I think it's the fun part. Yes. Um, don't get me wrong. Pre retirement is very important, and and. Uh, you know, I've, I speak to a lot of advisors that love to get people five years before they get them mm-hmm. um, in retirement. But yeah, it's it's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, and yeah, it's quite time. In that, do you, do you have a, a tie in with a, an accountant or estate planning business or, or anything it's, else? Yeah, so I have I have some wonderful accountants down in Canberra. So this is from your early days, from your because you, you you left Canberra what, perceivably eighteen years ago. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this the the founder of. Um, this accounting business, which is Bonsella Business Solutions in Canberra, he uh, Burn is the brother of a best mate of mine from school. So yeah, I've known him for relationships thirty five eh? years or whatever. Yeah. So so and what what are you? So what's if I was to ask them the role that you did for their clients? What do you think they would say? The role that I did for their clients. They keep sending Wait. him. Uh, well, no, sorry, I keep sending to them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So, well, well, if you're listening, if you're listening, friend from <laughs> 25 years ago, it's it's on the record as politely as like a possible. Uh, I think they've got their own advisors, so I'm okay. I'm not. I don't require the. Um, I don't require the leads back. I just. I just need to know that I've got an amazing team yeah. that will help my clients. And so, if- yeah, I've got. We've got an accountant. I've got a beautiful solicitor. I've got an amazing mortgage broker who I've known for 15 years, and she she'll help any of my clients with anything. Um, so yeah, I've just built that. Anything that my clients need, they can get. So let's play the legal side out of it because you mentioned that you do quite often come across a lot of women who are going through uh, separation. For instance, is there anything spe- is there any specific sort of lawyers in Sydney that you've dealt with? Um, well, uh, Jacqueline Wharton is the um, divorce coach for Verve Super, so she's probably one of the main ones I know, uh, but. That's more for more for amicable stuff. Um, so we do have a couple of contacts for the not so amicable, but um, it's always wonderful as a planner if you can if you can facilitate the amicable separation because you just get frustrated that you took that long to help build this wealth and that if they burn it on legals, it's a it's a little bit from from my experience. I'd be like, oh, if we could just like took me ages to get that hundred thousand dollars, don't burn it on us. Yeah, well, I know personally you can have an amicable separation because I had that. So congratulations. <laughs> so um, in relation to so that's the people now we, we we've mentioned about your, your your aspirations for growing the business. You mentioned um, you'd like to have someone come in in that operational role, being a COO. You you, you said uh, to run the business, and um, does that mean that you'd you'd look to grow advisor numbers, or 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 is it um, you'd look for the personalities? Yeah, it'd have to be very. Um, I don't think we would grow for the sake of growing. I think just we- one best practice award. I don't think that you're not going to be on the radar of aspirational people wanting to join you. That's a, a byproduct of 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 having those accolades so if, if you did have you know a, a stampede well a zebra stampede yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you did have if you did have a, a herd a, a, um a flotilla a, who knows um of people wanting to join you um would that would that please you would that scare you what would be your next step say three advisors wanted to join um it's actually called a dazzle of zebras by the way dazzle um Three advisors, oh, that'd probably scare me a bit. Yeah, one or two, that wouldn't, that'd be all right. That wouldn't scare me. Just have to be the right people. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And um, interesting, what's the right person? <laughs> hmm, good question. Um, I don't know, honest, reliable, hardworking, all those, all those Fun. kind of words. Fun is great. Yeah. Yeah, personable. Yep. Um, yeah, got a Love what you do. Love helping clients. What about the time frame? So, I mean, you're quite a young person. So, uh, do you have a, a, a time frame for how how long that you want to be doing this? Or, or at this stage, you're just so enthusiastic after restarting your business that, that it, it's forever? Yeah. No, yeah, no specific time frame. Uh, when I did my business coaching with um, Slipstream, I, we had to have a – we had to have a BHAG, like a big, hairy, audacious goal. And mine was that maybe in 10 years I could uh, I could uh, step back a little bit so I could do some of the art that I always wanted to do. What sort of art is it? Paper quilling. Paper quilling. Okay. Well, chuck the links in. <laughs> chuck the links in. Painting with paper. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. But no, no, no specific time frame. Happy to keep going. And um, as far as um, your your vision for the future and and, and – um, you know, when I listened back to the 2020 podcast that um, Clayton ho- hosted, almost everything that you said that you're going to do and all the observations that you made were correct and <laughs> probably the most wrong observations are the one Clayton did, which is uh, which is for me is just hilarious. <laughs> so if anyone wants to, to listen back or, or, or contact me as to how wrong he could be on a couple of things that, that um, please do. <laughs> but um, what's your vision for the future for the role of – um, non-client facing individuals in a practice what's my vision for the future for the role of non-client facing people in the practice do you think they're going to be phased out AI do you think that it's good to have a second person involved with each client maybe just give us a feel 
Uh, no, I don't think they're going to get phased out. I, think, I love people. I think we need to. I just like need- people too. Clients love people too. Yeah, clients love it when, you know, the minute a client comes on board, I send out an email saying, this is April, this is Zoe, they're amazing people, you know, they're also your contacts and clients love that. Um, I I think AI will allow us to be a lot more efficient, to be able to help a lot more clients, which is awesome, but I don't think it's going to get rid of the people. Yeah, well, I totally agree. It's um, And I think it's going to augment our ability to to service people better yep. and, and more of them. Um, whilst uh, re- retaining our, our sanity, um, we, which is there. And um, uh, uh, would you ever entertain someone um, like a joint venture with uh, like an accounting firm or, or, or any other investors in your business? We didn't speak about this earlier. You just gave yeah. me a look going, that wasn't on the run sheet. No, that's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, look, I, I'd entertain anything. I mean, we're we're open, we're flexible, um, you yeah, know, we've come this far kind of being open to things that happen in life so we'll see what the next few years bring i love it i love the enthusiasm um i was really looking forward to today's chat um your your story uh you know for anyone who goes back and listens there it's um uh he's quite a determined lady who who sort of um harnessed where she was in life and, and has pushed forward to you know create create your own sort of vision of what financial advice should be um just, just rounding out, um, if you were to click your fingers and get someone on to, to do that sort of uh, COO or GM role, um, is that something in, in the near future, you know, one or two years away? Um, people are listening to this and they do like people. So w- yep. w- what's your time frame for someone like that? Six to 14 months. 14? Six to 14? <laughs> Okay, yeah, if that's a, so six to 14 months, well, it's yeah. probably going to be about three to 11 months by the time this gets out <laughs> yeah. for those playing along at home. And in relation to um, looking for some uh, more advisors, particularly to help you with um, your incoming clients, um, if I was a, a aspirational female advisor who was very interested in, in, in helping um, people go through those life stages, yep. would you be open to an approach in the near future? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Well, look, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Ensemble. Um, you've been on twice now. We're going to follow your journey. I hope to, to talk to you again in in three mm-hmm. to four years. What's the name of the new license? That 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 ASC. ASC. So. At the moment, they're going to so brand. Forever, you'll be the carryover champion of RI Advice Practice of the Year, given that they won't no, they won't another they won't. one again. Woo-hoo. So, and still, <laughs> the number one practice. Um, <laughs> we, on behalf of all of us, we, we'd like to thank you for your time. We'd like to appreciate where you've come from and your vision for the future. And thank you very much for being on the interim. Alicia. Thank you for having me.